we are back and we have moved on quite a bit as you can see we've got a huge game today against real betis but first of all let's introduce you to the new team celta vigo let's run the intro whoa 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 not that intro let's run the new intro Right, so it's time now to introduce you to Celta Vigo. It took us a little bit of time to get the job, I'm not going to lie. First season on the game is 2020 to 2021, as I'm sure everybody is probably already aware. We got into the second season with Betis. Four games in, we got sacked. Let's not go over that. It took us until the end of last season to get a new job, and the job was Celta Vigo. We did get offered the Bilbao job in the middle of last season. I didn't fancy it. So Celta Vigo is where we are. Looking through the league positions, so they finished 16th in the first season. They finished 16th last season as well, so they're only just above the relegation zones. But I think we've made some pretty impressive signings, and I think we can definitely move up the table. So I'm not going to talk about the players that have gone out because realistically, probably doesn't mean much to anybody. But let's look at the players that we've brought in and the players that I think are going to have a big impact this season. So we're going to start with Omer Bayaz. He came in last season. We didn't actually buy him. He came in at the beginning of last season. He played 26 games, one goal, two assists, which isn't fantastic. But look at this kid. He's 18 years of age. Everybody is after him. Juventus came in, made an awful bid. He's unhappy. He wants to leave. But we're not going to let him do that. He has got a minimum fee release course of 12 million. So if we're, we've said, you know, someone comes in for 12 million, they can have you. Until that time happens, you got no chance. You're staying here. Hopefully, once the window shuts, he'll settle down a little bit and we'll be able to offer him a bigger contract. So the first signing that we made was a signing in on loan. Jaden Braff has come in from Man City. Left winger, cuts inside on his right foot. Wonder Kid, as the media description, absolutely mustered this kid. 19 years of age, so much talent. He's definitely going places, this lad. He actually spent last season on loan in Cincinnati, which probably hasn't helped his development too much. But I think he'll have a good season for us. I'm quite excited about him. We then brought in Renier in from Real Madrid on loan. Again, another Wonder Kid, 20 years of age. Fantastic moustache, and that's pretty much why we've bought him. Good, well-rounded stats. I think he'll be a good player. He is young. He'll probably do a decent job. He spent last season, well, the last two seasons on loan at Dortmund. 26 games, 7 goals and 7 assists last season, which is pretty good. Next up, we needed a left-back. Ruben Vinagra has come in from, from Wolves. In on loan. Again, we love a loan signing. Uh, he's average. If we're being honest, but he's quite attacking and I like, I like me fullbacks to be quite attacking. So I think that he'll do an okay job, you know, realistically he's a stopgap, but let's see how he goes on. He's only 23, he can improve, decent crossing, decent dribbling, good work rate, should be able to get up and down the pitch quite well. Abdullah Decore comes in from Everton on loan as well. This lad is just such an absolute beast. Look at his strength, 16 strength, 17 work rate. 16 team where hopefully he's going to boss the middle of the pitch in the La Liga. I think he'll do well for us. He is 29. He's probably in the twilight years of his career now, but I think he'll do well. I'm quite happy with that signing. One of the youngsters that we've brought in probably won't play for us at all is Thomas Hiskey. He's a left winger, likes to cut in on his right foot. I think he'll be decent, but one for the future. And it's time for an old friend, Nicolas Pepe. So... He never played the 50 games I think he needed to play, so Arsenal lost out on that 15 million. We've bought him for a straight up 4.2 million. He scored on his debut, which we'll see the goal coming up. Nicolas Pepe is in the van, and I am delighted. I'm convinced that this lad is the best right winger on the game, and I, I, I don't want any, any discussion about that. I'm convinced of it. We've signed this lad as well, Ruben Marcassini. And wow, 16 years of age and he's better than probably all of our centre-backs at the club. He doesn't actually sign until January 2024, so 
I mean, fingers crossed we're still at the club at that point when he comes in. We've got him for a bargain as well. 2.5 million plus, I think, an extra 5 million when he plays 50 games for the club. So, absolute bargain. He'll be one of those players that we bring in and after a couple of years he'll move on for like 80 million or something. But, you know, that that's the only way that you can really develop the club's finances. So, I'm happy with that one. I think he'll be a wonder star when he comes in. Brilliant. So, that is it for the signings. We'll have a little look through the team. You can see some, I'm, I'm guessing most people will be familiar with a lot of these players. So Hugo Mayo, he had a good couple of games against us last season, set two seasons ago. He's 31 now, but he is the captain of the club. Good all-rounder, no issues with him. Nestor Araujo, he can't head the ball, that's a problem. He's 30 years old, he's Mexican. First touch 13, he likes to play around with it at the back. He had a good first game, Let's see how he goes. Could, they couldn't really bring in any centre-back, so we've stuck with what we had. Kareem Rekic, 27 years old, the Dutchman. He should be all right. We've got Fran Beltran. He's a player that I've bought so many times for so many different clubs on the game. 23 years of age, bags of potential. Just an all-round great player in the in central midfield. I'm hoping to keep him for as long as I can. Apparently, Burnley are interested in him. Burnley have decided that they want to play football all of a sudden, so Sean Dyche was at the new Camp in the first game, which was ironic. We've got Santi Mina up front, all-round, excellent player, I would say. 26 years of age, he can get better as well. Good composure, good finishing, first touch, heading, off the ball, everything you want from a striker. He scored on the first game. I think he'll get goals. I'm pretty happy with him. So that then is the team. Now, before we get into our first game, I want to just talk about the opening game of the season and we went away to Barcelona and got a 2-2 draw but let's have a little look at the goals you can see Santi Mina and Nicolas Pepe getting the goals so Barcelona starting it off Emil Smithrow playing for them Messi scoring in off the defender straight past the keeper no issue for him and then an absolute thunderbolt from Smithrow wonderful finish good to see him doing well but we start, we decided to make a couple of changes and Rodriguez who came on playing it through to Santi Mina who chips the keeper. Delicious finish. And then in the last minute, Rodriguez involved again into Omer and Pepe making it 2-2. And not a bad result considering it's Barcelona. Obviously it's early in the season. Everyone may be getting off to a slow start but I was happy with that and it's probably a good sign going forward the thing that's interesting with Celta Vigo this season is no European games it's just going to be focusing on the league see if we can do something in the cup maybe I mean I'd be happy with with a top half finish anything better than that then is a bonus but we'll see how things go so coming up today you've got two games we're going to start at home against Real Betis we really want to show them what they're missing. And then we're going to go away to Malaga. So we've already ran through the team. It is going to be the normal team that we go with. By the way, Iago Aspas is still at the club. I'm going to take him off the transfer list because nobody's ever going to pay him any, any money for him, are they? So Aspas is at the club. He's plummeting in stats. But maybe coming off the bench, he might get a goal now and then. Maybe. Let's see how it goes. Here we go then, Celta Vigo against Real Betis. It's the first home game of the season, the first home game of the Scolo 87 reign. Can we get off to a win? It's going to be first chance for Kia. It's headed away. Go on, Pepe. He's got Santi Mina ahead of him. He's going to go alone. Oh, it's a great finish. Nicolas Pepe runs the length of the pitch and he scores. It's his first goal in front of the home crowd, his second for Celta Vigo, and it comes against his former employers great run from Pepe defence didn't know how to handle him bursting through and a lovely finish Celta 1 Betis nil. Vinagra throw in Reina Decore good ball Pepe's there he scores again Nicolas Pepe the goal machine he'll remember that one for some time to come Celta Vigo 2, Betis nil. Well, we couldn't have had a better start, really, could we? A draw away at Barcelona. And now we're 2-0 up against Betis. And Celta Vigo move into top spot. Unbelievable. Here's Mayo. Beltran. That's a terrible ball. Canales to Ian Acho. 
Ian Acho in behind. That's a good finish. That's why we signed him for them. Ian Acho scores for Betis, making it 2 1. Got an option. Santi Mina in behind. <sighs> Come on now. You've got more composure and finishing stats than that. Right, so we're 2 1 over half time. Um, played well so far, but there's room for improvement. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Everyone performing quite nicely. Pepe corner. Decore's header. And his first goal for Celta Vigo. I don't think this game could have gone any better. Maybe other than the goal. Maybe that just kept us on our toes. Celta Vigo 3, Betis 1. Mark Bartra making crosses in there. Is he playing right back? Santi Mina got options in the middle. And he's just fell over. Don't let him run at you. Oh, that's, a, that's a tame effort. Ruben Blanco. Vinagre into Braff. Good ball across. Pepe's there. And he scored a hat-trick. And it's his first hat-trick. Probably his first hat-trick in his career, let's be honest. And it comes against his former employers, Nicolas Pepe. I, I hope he's not just performing because he's playing them. We need him to do that all season. But I can't complain. Pepe scores three. Celta, four. Betis, one. And there's the whistle. And what a performance. Celta Vigo 4, Real Batiste 1. Um, well done, lads. Good win for us. Right, I'm going to do the press conference because I want to laugh at Real Batiste. And then we'll come back for the Malaga game in seven days' time. Here we go. Next up then, away at Malaga. No changes to the team. Everything went so well against Real Batiste. Let's just keep it the same. A little bit of consistency. See if we can get another three points. Uh, that'd be nice to at least keep... Oh, wow. Hugo Mayo injured. Four minutes in. Well, we've had to bring on a centre-back in place of our right-back, so that's not going to go well, is it? Tries to look forward anyway. Pepe driving for is Costa, who we've just brought on. Fran Beltran. Good effort. Celta Vigo 1-0 at Malaga. Tell you what, the Vigo fans haven't made much of an effort turning up, have they? It's a lovely place, Malaga. Nice, nice beaches. What more do they want? Fran Beltran drilled. I don't know what I don't know what the keeper's up to there. He's gone walk about, but Fran Beltran puts Celta Vigo in front and back on top of the pile for the time being as well. Here, champ, La Rubia. Beltran picks it up. Hasn't got many options. He finds Santi Mina. Santi Mina going all the way. And Jaden Braff with his first goal for Celta Vigo. The man on low from City. You know what I hate about this? It feels like it's all going too well, doesn't it? It feels like when we first started with Batiste and everything was going well and we thought, yeah, we're going to we're gonna win the league here. And then the next minute we were seventh. Careful, Costas, don't dive in. Messina, the Cordes header away. La Rubia. Back to Manoz. Finds Calero. Here's Ramon. Good cross in. Keeper deals with it. Ruben Blanco. Two shots, two on target. Four shots, three on target. Going well. Pepe's crossing. Rekic doesn't get there. Costas. Fran Beltran. Araujo. Here's Pepe. Good effort from Renier. Just over the bar. Celta still leading by two goals to nil. There's been a lot of chances in the first half. Vinagra wins it. Jaden Braff past his man. Inside. Looks to hit one. Uh, don't lose it there. Don't lose it there. La Rubia. Hit champ. Down the left hand side. Cuts inside. Takes the shot just over the bar. Good half, lads. Malaga nil. Celta Vigo two. Let's pump our fists and say things are going well. Let's get straight back out there. No changes. We actually didn't make a sub in the last game, which I thought was... He just played so well. Didn't really know what... Uh... Fran Beltran. I mean, there's Rocky Messet, who's horrendous. I'm going to bring on Bayaz. Give him a run out. Beltran getting injured. That's bad news. Really bad news. Pepe to take. Vinagre. Decore. Bayaz. 
Pepe again. Well, it's a weak effort. Tried to go all the way. Here's De Corde. That's better. Abdoulaye De Corde, his second goal of the season. And Celta Vigo lead Malaga by three goals to nil. It's been a great performance, but we've got worries. Hugo Mayo taking off is going to be, you know, a big problem. Problems in central midfield as well. Elder Costa. Pacheco. John Pacheco. Scores for Malaga. Oh, it's too late to mount a comeback, surely. Jaden Braff is taken off with an injury. Celta Vigo finished the game with 10 men. Oh, dear. Well, we've got the win. I'm worried about those injuries, I'll be honest. Right then, let's have a little look. Celta turn dominance into victory against Malaga. Lovely stuff. Fran Beltran. Three to four weeks. That's not great, is it? Hugo Mayo. Three to four weeks. Jaden Braff, one to three days. I'll take that one. So what does that mean? Three to four weeks. We're looking at... He's going to miss them two games, isn't he? He should be back for Hitafe. Okay. Not great. But let's see if we can get through those two games with half decent results and then go to Hitafe. In terms of where we next meet, an interesting one. See, normally I would be saying Real Madrid, but we're not really challenging Real Madrid, so is there any point? I think I want to move it on quite a bit. So I think we'll come back here uh, at the beginning of October. Levante and Espanyol, two teams that are normally around mid-table for La Liga. That should be quite good, I think, to give us a bit of a test away from home against them too. So I hope that you've enjoyed today's episode. I hope that you're glad that we're back. We've got a new team, a new challenge. Celta Vigo sitting in second place already. We're only three games in, so let's not get too excited. We meet back in October. I hope you'll join me for that. Until next time, see you later.